As Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever walk on the moon, there was a third man on Apollo 11. While Armstrong and Aldrin walked into glory, Collins drifted alone in silence, orbiting the moon. What he felt, what he saw, and what he later revealed would become something far more haunting. Apollo 11 was not only about the first steps on lunar soil, it was also about the man who stayed behind, carrying the burden of solitude and responsibility as the world's eyes looked elsewhere. But he was the one that stayed on the command module. He was the one sort of orbiting while they were picking up moon rocks, if you like. Michael Collins became the quiet guardian of that mission, facing moments of eerie stillness no other human had known before. In that silence, he uncovered truths far beyond the reach of history. The Forgotten Astronaut When people speak of Apollo 11, Two names echo through history, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. They were the men who stepped into the dust of another world, whose images were broadcast into millions of homes, whose words became part of human memory. They stood on the lunar surface, touched the unknown, and carried the pride of a planet. But Apollo 11 was not only about two men. There was a third, waiting silently above, whose role was just as vital, though far less celebrated. His name was Michael Collins. Collins never walked on the moon. He never stood in the harsh sunlight of that barren landscape, nor left his imprint beside the flag planted in triumph. While Armstrong and Aldrin made history, Collins circled alone in Columbia, the command ship that held their only path home. To the world, his role seemed quiet, even forgettable. He was the figure in the background of photographs, the name often skipped in conversation. But the mission's survival rested squarely on his shoulders. He was not just a caretaker of the ship. He was the one who kept systems alive, calculated maneuvers, and ensured the lifeline back to Earth remained intact. If anything had gone wrong on the surface, Collins would have faced the unbearable fate of returning alone, the silent witness to tragedy. That knowledge, heavy and unspoken, traveled with him in every order. Orbit. Collins accepted this invisibility with grace. He did not crave the spotlight. Instead, he carried the quiet honor of responsibility, even knowing that history might forget his name. Yet without him, the moon landing would have remained unfinished. He was the hidden pillar of Apollo 11, the man whose watchful solitude made triumph possible. A Life Before Apollo before Michael Collins became the man who circled the moon in silence, his life was shaped by movement, duty, and an unshakable pull toward the skies. He was born in Rome in 1930, the son of a U.S. Army officer who served abroad. His childhood unfolded in fragments, different cities, different countries, constant change. Growing up as a military child meant discipline was a given and adapting to new surroundings became second nature. This early restlessness would later prepare him for the vast isolation of space. In Washington, at St. Albans School, Collins first found himself drawn to the wonder of flight. Airplanes thundered overhead, and he could not look away. There was something in the sound of engines, in the idea of breaking free from the ground, that spoke to him in ways little else could. By 1952, he had graduated from West Point. Instead of following his family's army tradition, he chose the Air Force. He wanted wings, not boots on the ground. Collins became a fighter pilot, flying missions and learning the precision and courage that the cockpit demanded. 50 years ago this week, the world watched as the Apollo 11 crew lifted off. Later, at Edwards Air Force Base, he tested experimental aircraft, pushing machines and himself to the edge of what was possible. Each flight was a step into the unknown, each risk sharpening the calm focus he would one day need in space. In 1963, NASA opened its doors to a new group of astronauts. Collins was chosen, alongside others who would become legends. The Gemini missions tested him further. He performed spacewalks, rendezvous maneuvers, and tasks that demanded complete trust in both machines and instinct. Every exercise was rehearsal, every lesson a preparation for something larger. Though he could not know it at the time, Collins's path was already set. Each move, each decision, was drawing him toward Apollo 11, toward a seat on a mission that would mark humanity forever. The Burden of Responsibility When Apollo 11 left Earth, each astronaut carried a role. For Michael Collins, 
The task was both technical and deeply human. He was the pilot of Columbia, the command ship that would bring them all home. It was his duty to keep it alive, every system, every circuit, every breath of oxygen. The world watched Armstrong and Aldrin step onto the moon, but Collins faced a different weight. If anything failed below, he could not save them. If the lunar module never rose again, history would call him back to Earth alone. He would return as the survivor of a broken dream, carrying loss the world could never forget. Collins understood this before they even launched. Still, he accepted it, steady and calm, hiding the risk beneath quiet focus. He guided Columbia through delicate maneuvers, prepared for docking, checked and rechecked every control. His mind never drifted. His composure was the invisible thread holding the mission together. While others made history on the surface, he shouldered the haunting possibility of being the only one to return. Isolation in Lunar Orbit As Armstrong and Aldrin descended to the surface, Collins remained alone in Columbia, circling the moon. For 21 hours, he traced that path, orbit after orbit, a lone figure above a silent world. Each time he slipped behind the far side, all contact was lost. 48 minutes of pure silence. No voices from Earth, no signals from his crew, nothing but the steady hum of the spacecraft and the blackness pressing against the windows. It was a strange kind of solitude. Some imagined it would drive a man toward fear, but Collins described it differently. To him, the silence was calm, almost comforting. He felt no panic. Instead, he felt the rare weight of being the only living soul cut off from every other human being. On the far side, he saw landscapes no one on Earth had ever truly witnessed. Rugged craters stretched endlessly. Shadows carved deep scars across the surface. Above it all, space expanded without end. In those moments, he was both guardian and prisoner, circling endlessly, invisible to the world below. What others might have called loneliness, Collins called serenity. But serenity in such vast silence can also feel unsettling, even haunting. The Spooky Secret The silence of the moon's far side was not like the silence on Earth. It was deeper, heavier, untouched by human interference. No radios, no signals, no faint echoes from distant towers, just absolutely quiet. Astronomers later called it the most perfect place in the solar system for listening to the universe. But for Collins, it was something else entirely. Each time he drifted into that zone, he knew no one could reach him. If disaster struck, if the lunar lander failed to rise, he would carry that silence back alone. The thought hovered, unspoken, but never absent. This eerie awareness became his private secret. The mission depended on him, yet he was also cut off in ways no one else could imagine. Collins never spoke of monsters or shadows on the moon. The spooky truth he carried was quieter. It was the unsettling realization of just how small, how fragile, and how alone a human can be in the universe. In that silence, he was both witness and keeper of something haunting. Not fear of the dark, but knowledge born from it. A reminder that space holds truths that cannot be erased, only endured. The Overview Effect From his window, Collins often turned away from the moon and looked back toward Earth. What he saw was unlike anything words could capture. Rising above the curve of the lunar horizon was a small, glowing sphere. Blue oceans, white clouds, green lands, all wrapped together in a fragile shell of light. Against the vast darkness, Earth looked impossibly delicate, like a jewel suspended in nothing. This sight stirred something deep within him. It was more than beauty. It was a revelation. Every person, every memory, Every war and every dream, all of human history, was contained in that tiny circle. From space, the divisions that consumed people disappeared. Borders meant nothing. Nations faded. What remained was one shared home, floating and vulnerable. Collins later said the view gave him clarity. It was not just about exploration, but about understanding our place in the universe. He felt the interconnectedness of life 
the fragile thread that binds us to one another. The silence of orbit sharpened that awareness. Alone in the black void, he discovered a truth. Earth's greatest secret was its unity, a truth too easily forgotten on the ground. After Apollo, when the mission ended and the crew returned home, the world celebrated Armstrong and Aldrin. Michael Collins stepped back quietly, content to let their names shine. He never sought fame. Instead, he carried his reflections into a different kind of mission. Collins spoke often of Earth's fragility. What he saw from orbit never left him. He urged leaders and citizens to treat the planet with care, to recognize its limits. For him, Apollo was not only about reaching the moon, it was about learning to value the world we already have. He wrote of his solitude in carrying the fire, capturing the strange peace of orbit, the haunting silence, and the spiritual questions it awakened. Though not a religious man, he came to sense an order in the universe, something beyond chance. Collins went on to lead institutions, inspire students, and live a quiet life. Yet his words carried the weight of someone who had seen Earth from a distance. He knew what few could know, that our planet is small, vulnerable, and worth protecting at all costs. Michael Collins may not have touched the moon, but he touched something deeper. His solitude revealed truths hidden from the noise of Earth. The spooky silence of the far side was not terror. It was a mirror, showing him the scale of the universe and the fragility of our world. While Armstrong and Aldrin became the faces of triumph, Collins became the voice of reflection. His legacy is not measured in footsteps on lunar soil, but in the questions he carried back. Who are we? What connects us? And how will we protect the only home we share?